Okay, so I was wondering what would I say? What would I do? What would I speak on? What topic would I come from? And I said, hmm, call to a higher standard, taking the high ground. And the first person that I thought of, and then the only person that after I thought of this person that I could think of was Jesus. And that's the only person I can think of. Can y'all all say amen? Amen. amen? Y'all remember when I came here last time, I told y'all I didn't want them to come in and think we was a white church here. So y'all got to <laughs> learn to say amen when we talk back to me. And so in 1 Peter um, chapter 2 and verse 9, the Bible says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people, excuse me, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Do you all know that you're blessed? No matter how young or old you are, do you know that you're blessed? Do you guys really know? I, I, I'm not too convinced by the look on some of your faces. Some of you are kind of wondering, am I really blessed? Am I really blessed? How many people woke up this morning? You're blessed because there's a lot of people that didn't wake up this morning. How many people have a roof over their head? You're blessed because a lot of people don't have roofs over their head. How many people have clothes on their back? And every hand should go up here because I can see that everyone has clothes on their back. You know you're blessed because there are so many people who don't have clothes on their back. And so the first thing that I thought of when I thought of this, and I said, we are special people. We are God's own special people, so special that he particularly chose us. He particularly chose us, and, but he didn't only choose us. He chose us for a reason. He chose us for a reason that we must fulfill a purpose for him. Y'all getting that yet? God chose us so that we must fulfill a purpose for him. It says we were in the dark. Anybody ever woke up at nighttime and, and you got to go to the bathroom or, or maybe some of you parents, the babies are crying and, and, and it's dark outside or it's dark in the house and you got to stumble around and you might hit your foot on a lampstand or something like that trying to get to the baby's room because the baby's crying and you got to feed the baby. Greg, I know you got a lot of kids. You probably can, can relate to that. <laughs> and so that's being in the darkness. It's tough being in the darkness. Imagine when, when you guys in Ohio here, we have sometimes um, big power outages where the power goes out. And, and you hate that, don't you? You know, your food in the refrigerator is going to spoil. You can't turn anything on. You can't watch TV. You can't listen to music. You can't charge your cell phone. So you got to watch how many people you text message because, you know, that really drains your battery down and everything like that. And so everything is in the darkness. But then we are so relieved when we hear like the little beep, like for the microwave or the stove or the whatever it is, come back on and the lights come back on. We're so relieved and we're so excited, aren't we? The same thing works in our lives. Our lives are the same way that we were all once, and maybe some of us still are, in darkness. And then God called us out of that darkness into the light. And what God was necessarily doing when he called us out of the darkness into the light, what he was doing, he was calling us from the low standard we had been living by and calling us to a higher standard of living. Calling us out of the darkness into the light. Back in the time when Jesus roamed the earth, don't you know that light was a very, very valuable thing? There was no electricity. So once it got a certain time and the sun went down, that was it. If you didn't have a lamp, if you didn't have oil to burn that lamp, that was it. That was it. It was over with. And so a lot of times the Bible uses the term light. Light. Because light was such a valuable thing back then. And people really understood how valuable light was. And just as light is valuable back then, just as we were caught out of the darkness into the light, we are valuable to the world today. The Bible says in Matthew that a, um, a lamp that is set up on a hill and is hidden cannot be seen. But the light is to be shown out for everybody to see. And so now we all have a purpose. We were all called out of the darkness. We were all called out of the darkness. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. His own special people. Don't you know how, how, how great of a statement that is to be God's own special person? To be a special person of God? It, it, it feels good. Most of you, should, parents may still be living. And so it feels good to be your, your parents and to be loved by your parents, doesn't it? Does it? Yeah. Yes? Okay. I, I just wanted to make sure. I wanted to make sure. 
It feels good to be loved by your parents, doesn't it? Because you're your parents' own special child. They help raise you up. They help mold you into the many of you into the people that you are today. I'm sure that everybody here can look at and think about something that their parents did in their life that have influenced you to the way that you act today. It, 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 would that be a fair statement? Would that be a fair statement? I, I know it, for me it, it was. Um, my mother, when I was younger, she used to work on me a little bit. So every time I hear a bell, I straighten up. Because I was hearing bells ringing in my head all the time as a kid. She would always knock me upside my head. And I was like, so when I hear bells ring, I, I straighten right up. I, I straighten right up. If I hear somebody whistle real loud, it, it catches me off guard. Because when my mom, when she would whistle real loud, I knew that, you know, mama ain't playing no more. Whatever, whenever, whatever I, it was that I wasn't doing, I better go do it now. You know, I should tell you to go do the dishes three or four times and you're sitting there and you're watching TV. Okay, mama, I'm going to get in a minute. You sit there and you keep flipping. Boy, you do those dishes yet? Oh, no, my mama, get up in a minute. I don't hear no water running yet. My mama, get in a minute. And she, time to go do the dishes now. Because <laughs> I knew she wasn't going to ask anymore. But I was my mother's own special child. I was her own special child. And the same thing is true of us. We are God's own special children. We're God's own special children. Don't you know that's an amazing statement right there? That you're God's own special child? Do you know what a privilege that is? A privilege it is to be God's own special child. To be able to, to, to worship freely. Do you know how many places around the world where they can't worship freely, who, where they want to be God's own special child, but there's laws and restrictions and death penalties faced against people and they can't do it? We're so blessed. That goes back to what I was saying in the beginning. We are such a blessed people. We are such a blessed people. And then the word of God goes on to say, um, him who called you, um, he says, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Who once were not a people of God, but now are a people of God who um, had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. We received mercy. We received grace. We were once not a people. We are now a people. That's such a beautiful thing. But now, since God did all that, since he called us out of this darkness that we were in into the light, since he, he made us his own special people, since he named us a, high, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a chosen people, a peculiar people, since he named us those things, now we must do something for him. We must take the high road. 